Okay, Peter bought six more chairs than tables. A table cost $36 and a chair cost $18. He paid $396 more for the tables than the chairs. How many chairs are there? All right, so as we can see, the six more chairs than tables here indicate that we must use a quantity and value model method. Okay, quantity and value table may not be the best in this case since you are given a difference. So quantity and value table will be useful only if it's like a ratio, quantity ratio given here, or if a fraction is given here, like, you know, for example, three-fifths as many chairs as tables, uh, that kind. Then using the QV table, you know, it serves as a grouping method straight away. But for now, we are unable to apply any sort of grouping method right away because of this difference, because of this extra quantity. Okay, so we are going to go on to draw a quantity model first. So I hope we can tell quantity in this case is the number of items, whereas the values are the cost of the items. Okay, so it's a very simple comparison model, six more chairs than tables. This. Now, and also since I have another value here, another value difference here. $396 more, that's also a difference, okay? Just that, that way is the cost difference. So since there's a cost difference, we call that the total value model, okay? So to be clearer, I call this total value because there are many more, um, we, there are many more groups, there are many, many of these tables and chairs that contributes to a difference of 396. Not just simply one table versus one chair's difference, no. Okay, that's why I just included the word total value to be clearer. So total, uh, sorry, tables versus chairs. So I got to use this 396 to create my model. So tables will be more expensive by $396, okay? So the difference, usually I'll write it above here because I may need to prepare to, you know, cut from the model or something, all right? Okay, so I have two kinds of differences. I finished recording my data. I have a quantity difference as well as a value difference here we will choose to get rid of this extra six chairs first. Okay, because later on, it will be easier to convert quantity to a value instead of the other way around. Okay, so quantity and value later, you know, can do something to the value more than later. So let's just lightly shade off the six. Okay, now since we have removed the six chairs from the quantity side, you have to be fair to the value model as well. The value of these six chairs naturally will have to be disappear, will have to disappear from this side also. Okay, but of course, I need to find out what's the value that must disappear. And that is why my first step is to calculate this value of six chairs. All right, which will be six times $18. So now I need to prepare to shape off $108 from the chairs model. Make sure you shade off from the correct model. If you get rid of extra chairs, make sure value model also shade off from chairs. Don't go and shade off from tables. One chair, one table, then wrong already. Okay, so get rid of $108. So just cut and shade off. So you just, you know, just make a judgment of how big you want $108 to be. Okay, there's no, no strict rules on this. Then you shade it off. Okay, now looking at the value model, I want you to use your fingers, cover away your $108 and tell me did the difference expand or shrink? Think about that. Initially, the difference was $396. We can all agree on this because the question already told us so. However, now that you covered off $108, the difference, can you tell it expanded? it became bigger. So this is now your new total difference, right? Because when you use your finger cover, the difference starts from here and it ends off at here. All right, so now we are going to calculate out this new total difference simply by taking 108 plus the $396. Okay, so we what to do next. So back to the quantity model. Remember, since we have gotten rid of the extra six chairs, now the quantity is now the same between tables and chairs. So since quantity is the same, 
okay, we can apply our grouping method. Never ever do 504 divided by two units. It doesn't work that way because the cost of a table and a chair is different, different cost. Only the quantity is the same. If you take 504 divided by two, then you're telling me the value is split equally, which doesn't make sense. Okay, only the quantity is equal. Value may not be equal in this case. All right, so you have to apply grouping method. So in one group, I throw in one table, one chair. Can write the cost as well. Of course, there are many more groups to give us a new difference of five zero four dollars. Okay, so things like that must be labeled clearly. Now, next thing is, since I wrote here total difference, obviously for one group, I have to go and find difference in one group. Don't go and find total in one group, yeah? It's not going to help. It's not going to be helpful later. You will not need it anyway. Okay, so difference in one group, simply 36 minus 18. Next step, of course, find number of groups. Okay, so to find number of groups, you have to take the total difference value divided by the difference per group. Okay, so now you know I have 28 of such groups. Once you get that, always revisit the final question. They want the number of chairs. In one group, how many chairs are there? In one group, I see one chair. Since I have 28 groups, I have 28 chairs, but you have to do the 28 times 1. That's how you get the 28, right? Not just the 28 here. 28 is just the groups here. And then always check back the quantity that you get rid of. Remember just now we got rid of six chairs? You have to add it back here. So if the question asks tables, if you ask how many tables, you stop here. But since you ask for chairs, because of this extra six chairs that just now we removed, we have to bring it back in. That's why you have to add the six. Okay, so 34 chairs is the answer.